Hi foxes and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany. I am also known as Shop Foxboro, and you can find me on Poshmark, Instagram, and Etsy. And today it is Etsy that we are talking about. So I do want to integrate more Etsy content into my channel this year. I feel like there's really a lack of Etsy vintage information out there. So I'd kind of like to break that um, wall down and get a little bit more content out there based on selling vintage on Etsy. And today I'm coming at you with sort of a wrap up video. Um, it is now going into 2021. So what I thought I would do is share with you my 10 best sales on Etsy for last year. Um, so if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. Now I'm also going to do one of these videos for my 10 best Poshmark sales and I'm going to do a little bit of a wrap up video um, to let you know how much I made on all the different platforms that I am on, um, whether I saw growth in my sales and just kind of like what my plan is going forward for 2021. Um, I don't know if you've seen the meme out there. But um, we're all just not going to claim that 2021 is our year. We're just going to like take it easy and sort of like sidle in and see what we can make happen. But um, yeah, 2020 was completely full of unexpected um, disasters and hardships for so many people. And um, it was just quite a doozy of a year. So we're going to hope that 2021 treats us a little better and that we can start to get back on our feet. Um, but I'm going to show you what my sales were like during um, the pandemic and just kind of like the effect that I saw. Another video I do have planned is I asked a ton of Etsy vintage sellers what their top tips were for getting into Etsy or starting an Etsy or for a beginner Etsy seller and they gave me some really great feedback. So I am going to do a kind of um, tips video with collected tips from the Etsy vintage seller community. So I do hope that you will subscribe and stick around. I am trying to grow this channel and the more Etsy viewers that I can get then the more Etsy content that I can put out. Without further ado, I am going to go ahead and jump into my top 10 sales. So I'm going to start with the uh, bottom and then move my way up to the top. Um, and then I'm going to throw in a little bonus one at the end as well. If you see me looking down, I've got my little sheet here. Um, so I'm going to go over the item, what it was, I'll show you over here, the sale price, whether or not it was domestic or international. Um, my cost of goods if I remember them, my any off-site ads fees that happened, and my the, like the net sales, so what actually ended up in my bank account after cost of goods, fees, etc. And whether or not it sold while it was on sale or whether it sold full price. So the first sale is this beautiful 1940s button back wedding dress. Um, this was what is called slipper silk. It is not always um, actually silk. Sometimes it is a synthetic. If you think about the 40s, you know, you're thinking about wartime era. Um, they certainly didn't always have the materials to make a dress like this. But coming out of that wartime era, there definitely was that boom in fashion and just um, just more is better. You've got the new look coming on. So um, your dress, if you find one like this, is a very common style for the time period. But if you find one like this, it may be silk, it may not. You have to do a burn test to see. Um, but this sold for $95.99. And you might think that that was very low. That is true. It was heavily damaged. Um, I've had a couple of these. One of them, the train, had a ton of like black schmutz stuff on the hem um, that I could not get off. But the front of the dress was in really nice shape. 
Um, and then the other one had like some armpit staining and stuff that I couldn't soak out. Um, I did wash both of them because I got them from the Goodwill outlet. But yes, so they were damaged and basically I knew that someone was going to have to rework the dress or take it to be like professionally cleaned for it to maybe be wearable on a wedding day unless they were just using it for photos. Uh, this is the international sale that I had. So all the others are domestic, but this one is international. This one ended up going to France. I got it at the Goodwill bins for about $5, um, and that is where you shop by the pound. And this is just a type of thing where I really shouldn't, <laughs> I shouldn't buy it and bring it home. It's not like wedding dresses are my specialty, but I just can't see something that beautiful and so like, lovingly made and with a history like that and just leave it behind to be recycled. Um, so I brought it home. Uh, but it did sell and after all the fees and everything were taken out, my profit was $83.31. So that's not bad. Um, usually, you know, you can get a lot more for wedding dresses, but uh, this one, like I said, was damaged. The next sale was one of those sales that I just kind of like like it just blew my mind when this sold so if you know Edward Gorey he is an artist and he kind of has this like macabre um sort of drawing style and he did this series on PBS back in the 80s called mysteries um or mystery and they had this commemorative like collectible mug set to go with it. So it was illustrated uh, with a scene and then when you filled it with hot water, it would reveal who done it. So it was really cool. You know, I saw this at Goodwill um, and I just thought, that's Edward Gorey. It's really neat. Um, it was like a dollar. And so I picked it up and brought it home and I, did some research on it and these mugs go for a lot of freaking money. Uh, the one that I had was actually not available anywhere else so no one had it listed. There are some that are on eBay for like 25 or 30 because there's quite a few of them but the one I had was not available anywhere else. I did find a couple of previous solds I could pour the water in and it did work. If it goes through the dishwasher, they get ruined. So if it has to work, you know. Um, so I paid a dollar for this. It went to someone domestically. And this actually sold through Etsy's offsite ads. So Etsy will pick up certain items from your shop and advertise them offsite for you as long as you opt in or rather if you don't opt out of it, um, then Etsy will do that, but they charge a fee when it sells. And it is a pretty hefty fee. It is very akin to Poshmark. It is 15% if you don't meet the threshold of selling $10,000 in your Etsy shop in a year. It is 12.5% if you do meet that threshold. Um, so they did like a trial period to let you see kind of how Etsy offsite ads would affect you. And they waived all the fees during that period. So this would have been $14.40 in fees, but it was waived. So I actually got the full amount. So after fees and my cost of goods, I got $87.31 for the smug. <laughs> Which again, it's just like mind blowing. <laughs> just this, it's just a, it's a coffee mug. I mean, it was really cool, but that's a lot of money for a coffee mug. Um, next up was a vintage Japanese cotton yukata long robe. This I got at the Goodwill bins. Um, it was very pretty. It got a lot of tension on both Poshmark and Etsy and it sold domestically and it sold not on sale and after my bins cost which was about two dollars so after my cost of goods and fees I got $89.07 for that. 
Next up was a dress that I bought off of Instagram. I got it for myself knowing that um, I would eventually sell it. Uh, but I did wear it once and it was this 1950s chicken pocket dress. So it was like a blue and white striped dress but the pockets were chickens and it was amazing. It had a zippered front. Um, it was like 40s, 50s, like farmhouse style. And I paid about $30 for that. And it sold for $125.99. And so after my cost of goods and all of the fees, I made $85.91. I did have a lot of interest in this item. I did have some lowball offers, especially over on Poshmark. Um, but I stayed firm because I knew it was a magical piece of chicken art and I got what I wanted for it. Next up was a 70s seed bead like waterfall necklace. Very beautiful. I got a couple of these at an estate sale and um, this one sold on sale on my Etsy shop for $100.79. I paid $2 for it at an estate sale. It sold to someone domestically and after all of my fees and cost of goods I made $90.72. I did really, really well with these necklaces um, and I just sort of bought them on a whim because I thought that they were very beautiful and intricately beaded um, and I didn't really know much about them so it took me some research to figure out if they were true vintage and kind of what their worth was um, and there weren't really many uh, available online so... I kind of shot for the moon and they actually sold pretty quickly so I was very happy with that. Next up was another 1950s dress. This was another novelty print dress and it had little sewing machines um, and just like sewing motif all over it and it was um, from my personal closet so I bought it for myself and it sold for $134.09. It sold on sale. Um, and after, after all of the fees, the money they deposited in my account was $123.36. I do not remember exactly how much I paid for this dress. Um, so I did not put that in here as cost of goods because it was for me. Um, but I imagine I probably paid somewhere around $40 to $50 for it. So I certainly made more than I paid for it. I was very happy with the selling price on that one. Next up is a vintage wedding dress from the 60s. I know I said I don't sell wedding dresses and here we are. There's two of them in my top sales. Um, but this wedding dress, my husband used to stop on his way home uh, when I first started my vintage business, he would stop at Goodwill and just sort of like look through the dresses and then just bring things home for me. And he found this dress. It was in a box. Um, like sometimes you'll find old vintage dresses and they'll be in these big old blue or white keepsake boxes and it has like a fold over flap and you lift it up and it's got a big like um, plastic circular front so you can kind of like see part of the dress inside but it's like preserved. So this was a preserved dress. Goodwill had it marked for $30. My husband bought it, brought it home. It sat underneath my dress rack for... I don't know... Seven years? Something. Eight years, something like that. And finally this year I decided to really list everything that I had, had been hoarding. And I put it out there, again, with the wedding dresses and the steaming, not my favorite thing, but it did sell for $149.99, sold to someone in the U.S. Um, again, my husband paid $30 for it, however long ago, and after all the sales, after all the fees and my cost of goods, I made $107.99 on that. I think maybe when the world is a little less covid -y. You know, I might still pick up wedding dresses, but right now I would pass on them because I feel like there's just not as many people getting married right now because of 
COVID. I mean, obviously some people still are, but the the wedding market is definitely like lower right now. Okay, and moving on, we have three sales left. This is fabric. It is a vintage Lily Pulitzer fabric. It is by Key West Hand Print, Mike by Zusik. Um, and it is like a strawberry and floral green bright fabric. It's like pink and green and very bri bright. I was at the Goodwill outlet digging through bins as you do and I saw this fabric from like I don't like a mile away it's just like neon in my eyes and I recognized it for what it was like that and so I had been doing research prior to to this on Lily Pulitzer Fabrics and her history and before she had her own line she designed for Key West handprint fabrics back in the 60s um, and those are like super early Lily Pulitzer prints are super desirable this was I think two uncut yards of fabric maybe three um, but it sold for $199.99 this actually sold with off-site ads, so thank you Etsy. And I paid about a dollar for it at the Goodwill bins, and then Etsy took $31.31 in off-site ad fees. And so after all is said and done with the fees, I made $163.68, just because I recognized this fabric print, um, even if it hadn't been this if it hadn't been the Mike by Susick fabric I still would have picked it up because old fabric can do well and this is it would have been like a very reminiscent like lily type print but um it did happen to be that one so it was just like even more icing on the cake <laughs> okay next up another thing I bought for myself <laughs> surprise um, it is a purple hooded fur cape from the 1950s. I kid you not, this was like royal purple with a mink trimmed hood. It was completely amazing and magical, um, but it was hard to like move and function in and I have kids so I have to like load them into the car and it's just like I don't get to do like leisurely, you know, shopping where I'm not like pushing a stroller or like corralling children. So I had to let this go. I did wear it like two times, I think, but um, I paid about $20 for that at a consignment store. And I thought it was like the deal of a lifetime when I bought it and it was because it sold for $249.99. Um, it was not on sale, so someone bought it full price. They purchased it domestically in the United States. And after all of the fees and my cost of goods, I made about $209.99 on that coat. Okay, last thing. And again, literally could not believe that this sold for the price that I listed it at. I was just like blown away sometimes you just have to if there's not another one out there you just have to like shoot for the moon and if you think that it's it's like worth it on one level or another it really might be so this was a pair of vintage Timberland boots that I picked up at an estate sale they were my size so I bought them for myself I wore them a couple of times um I had them resold at, or I had the soles glued back on at a cobbler, and I would not let them touch the leather. I was like, don't buff it, don't refinish it, don't polish it, don't do anything. Just glue the soles back on and leave them as they are, because they had the most amazing, like, beat up look to them, and I found them by the back door of this estate sale going out into the garden. The person had obviously used them as gardening shoes um, and they were all like cobwebby and dusty and I just saw them and I fell in love with them and they had them marked for $3. $3. Uh, 
dollars. So I bought these boots and they hung out in my closet in my collection for many years and finally I decided to list them and boy did I have to go down the rabbit hole of research for these. Um, so these were very very early Timberlands um, back before they had like gotten their trademark stamp and um, yeah so they were just from like the 1970s they were a very very early boot I could find nothing like them online they were authentic but just again like so old and so rare and from like the start of the company that um, I didn't really know where to start with pricing them so I priced them at four hundred and forty nine dollars they did sell on Etsy and they sold on sale they sold for three hundred and eighty two dollars and forty nine cents to a domestic buyer and she was so happy with them I was so worried that she was gonna get them and be like what did I do but she loved them and um when I got that feedback I was just like over the moon I thought it was really cool that someone else thought that they were as awesome as I did when I picked them up I did I did use Dr. Martin's Wonder Balsam on them to just like make sure that the leather wasn't gonna crack um they had their original laces I mean they were just really really cool and so after all the fees and my cost of goods I made $348 and 44 cents and that was like just a really awesome sale and I was super grateful for that so those are my top 10 Etsy sales and again it just goes to show you that you can find like really valuable stuff that maybe other people don't recognize or don't pick up I mean I was at this estate sale and I was certainly not one of the first people there but it's just that other people didn't see the value in those and you know being at the bins the wedding dress that I found was on the floor and the Lily Pulitzer fabric was in a bin that other people had looked through already so a lot of times it may seem like there's a lot of competition um, or there's a lot of people there who are you know looking to buy as well but they might not be looking for the same thing as you or the more that you expand your horizons and the more that you learn about vintage and like different items um, the more you can find value where you might not expect or where other people aren't seeing it so that's one of the things I love about selling vintage and this year had a lot of really fun sales for me like high higher dollar sales um I did have one sale in December after um I created this sheet and that was a pair of Tanika boots they were snow boots and they're very beautiful I bought them on Poshmark and I bought them for myself but they did not fit me they were a little bit too small and they're actually a bit dirtier than the seller advertised but she only charged $40 for them um, so I didn't like open a case or anything I wanted to keep them I practiced cleaning suede on these so I actually learned how to clean suede in experimenting with these boots and they turned out really nice and they sold for full asking I think either 10% off or full asking price I'll put it up here um, but I was very happy with that sale so again I paid $40 and I, they sold somewhere around the like 170 range um, yeah so I was really happy with that too and that was another one that I had gotten some lower offers on Poshmark and just kind of not taking it um, you know when you have something really special sometimes you just have to wait it out and the right person will come along and that was one of those things so I hope that this video was fun or helpful for you leave me your best Etsy sales down in the comments below I want to know what's old for you in 2020 that you were just like wow um, I can't believe this sold for that much or you were just like super excited that it moved and that you found it and you put it out there and someone else bought it so let me know
what your favorite Etsy sales were and do not forget to give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.